All right. Uh, thanks very much, Lisa. And uh, I'd like to uh, really uh, commend the uh, ANZ AIM Organising Committee for running this session this afternoon. And I say that uh, from the perspective uh, of this, that, that it wasn't until I was in second year mathematics at university that I really understood why maths was important. And I got that view by going to a bunch of applied maths lectures. So I didn't get it at school. I got it at university. So I think any opportunity applied mathematicians have to involve themselves with, with what's going on in high schools and so on are opportunities that need to be taken up uh, by that community. And, and, and hopefully you'll sort of see that flavour through my talk this afternoon. So, so that's my take home message. Um, ANZI and members need to become more involved in what's going in, on in high schools. And I've got evidence to back that statement up, not just my own personal um, reflections, but, but what's, what I see uh, at my institution as well. Um, all right, so let's, um, what I want to do is focus on the links between applied mathematics, uh, pre-service maths teacher education, and what happens in the maths classrooms at schools. And so, I should have st started by saying, wh why did I call this collaboration across the creek? It's called collaboration across the creek because this involves collaboration between um, education academics and math academics. And this was, uh, and at JCU there's a creek that runs across the centre of campus. And then for most of the history of the university, there's sort of been this animosity between the two sides of the creek and, and people didn't collaborate. Uh, but since about 2009, we have been collaborating, and, and I guess that's largely the reason I'm here today talking about this. Um, all right, so going the wrong way. So, what I want to do is is focus on applied maths for a minute, and these are statements that are taken out of Fenton Pillow's inaugural lecture that he gave at the University of Queensland. I think it was in 1965. The document was published a, a year later. Um, but it says this, and this has imp implications for what's going on in, in teacher education, as I'll get to towards the end of the talk. So applied mathematics seeks knowledge and understanding uh, in terms of idealised models. So modelling is important in applied maths. And through the use of mathematical methods and scientific inference. The, the need for skill in the construction of models cannot be overemphasised. Often this construction is more difficult than the mathematical work that follows. Such skill is best gained by experience from a knowledge of relevant science. So you can see from that statement there that applied mathematics not only involves mathematics, it involves things outside of mathematics. In particular, Fenton there mentions science. Now, we know that applied maths is, more, is broader than science, but I think the underlying uh, point here is that in order to do applied mathematics, you need to know mathematics and you need to know something else as well in order to apply that mathematics on. Okay, so now to this collaboration across the creek. Um, it was built on mutual need. Uh, I, I met the lady who teaches the uh, maths education subjects at JCU, uh, Joe Bellardi, and we had a, a fairly frank conversation one day about the standard of the students in her maths pedagogy subject. Now the maths pedagogy subject is in third year and before they get to that subject they've done three maths subjects with my department. And she sat me down one day and she said, Sean, the students I've got in my pedagogy subject, they've done three of your subjects, they've been through high school, but yet when it comes to them trying to explain how they're doing their grade nine maths, they can't. So they've been through a bunch of math subjects, but yet they struggle to explain the concepts that they've got to teach in front of, in front of kids. Alongside of that, I was having trouble in my first year maths class. You know, the usual sorts of problems with engagement. What do I do in tutorials? How do I uh, arrange my lectures so that I'm getting my content across in, a, in, a, in, a, in the optimal way? And so we, had need, we both had needs that each of us could help with, each other with. And so that's how this collaboration began. And so around about 2009 um, or 2010, we, we, the first thing we did was set up this action research project, which was the first time we'd really done a thorough evidence-based 
approach to teaching first year maths at JCU. So we had a, a, a bunch of us who worked together um, with the maths educator as sort of the facilitator of our action research team. Uh, and so we, we, we revised the subject on that basis. And as a consequence, we had this bunch of um, honours projects. These were students who were doing a Bachelor of Education and they did their honours project in our first year maths subject, sort of looking at various aspects of it. Um, or, or not all of them, the, the, the second one there was this, this phenomenon that happens not only at, in, in, in Queensland but in other places as well, where students opt to take a lower level of maths in high school than, than is optimal. Uh, or, or than, than they might. So that's the switch from Maths B to Maths A that we talk about there. Um, one of the things we did was, was uh, get a work integrated learning grant together uh, where we were able to connect uh, pre-service teachers, Maths pre-service teachers, to uh, uh, Maths teachers in the classrooms. So this was a different type of interaction to what usually happens between Maths teachers and pre-service teachers. The usual interaction is one where a pre-service teacher takes a maths teacher's class, and so there's a power relationship there. Our, our uh, work integrated learning grant was uh, more uh, the, the pre-service teacher working together with a teacher on tutoring a, a year nine student. And the, the high school teacher would give advice on how that pre-service teacher might um, tutor the student um, in different ways. All right. Um, now, this subject here, MA2900, was the subject that we developed in response to the need of having pre-service teachers who are better equipped to teach the maths in the classroom. And so this subject is a math subject, so it sits in my school, um, but it is there specifically for pre-service teachers. And so we've developed a framework around which the subject is built, and you can see it written on the screen there. Now, this subject, there's very few of them like this. In fact, Joe and I couldn't find anything like this one in Australia. There are other versions that are not quite the same because, for example, our subject here, that the students have to have done three subjects prior to this one. Um, but Fenton Pillow, in his inaugural address at UQ uh, in 1965, said that there's various different types of maths that a mathematician might have to teach and he spoke about service teaching, and he spoke about teaching pure maths and so on. And then he spoke about the need to have subjects specifically for teachers. Um, but no one seems to have taken that up until, until very recently. And so that, that collaboration has brought some funding uh, to us. Um, the first project there on the left, through the Office for Learning and Teaching, is the INSIGHT project, so INSIGHT stands for Imp Inspiring Mathematics and Science in Teacher Education. And uh, Judy Anderson, who's sitting over here, is, is uh, from Sydney University, and Sydney University is also on this grant. And so that one there is about teacher education, or pre-service teacher education. So it's a strategy aimed at improving the quality of teachers going into the classroom by optimising their experience at university. That's, th I guess, the main thrust of that. And then the Queensland STEM Education Network is a, is a second grant which has two different uh, strategies. One is to work directly with uh, school students um, in, in getting them engaged in maths and science uh, when they're in school. And then the other approach that that project takes is influencing the influences. So how do we optimise um, the messages that school students are hearing from other people who influence the choices they make? And so, with this funding, we then thought, well, what we need to do is to work out what our stakeholders around our region want. And so we had two meetings, one in Townsville and one in Cairns, where we invited maths teachers to come and hear what we had to say, um, the funding that we had, and then get them to give input into the strategies that we were going to develop for our region. And so we had maths teachers and HODs, GOs are guidance officers and principals. Those were the, the people we, we thought would be best um, there to advise us. So we had 100 uh, teachers from around the Townsville region one afternoon. They all came from 200 kilometres south up to 150 kilometres north and 150 kilometres west. They all came in on a, a Tuesday afternoon and sat down with us to work out how we might move forward with this, with this money. And, and similarly in Cairns, we had about 50 of them up there. 
And so the information that we got back was this. Um, the teachers had some ideas, and so one, one of the strategies we did was to give them seed funding to run their own strategies within the schools to engage students in, in various maths activities. It came with, the money came with conditions. They had to um, write a report on what they did. Um, so we've got an archive of the different strategies that have been used across the schools in North Queensland and that can then be used as a resource to share amongst the schools uh, later on. This was really important. One of the things that we got was that there's a lot of resources that are developed elsewhere, outside of our region. And students in North Queensland, they're a bit funny. They don't sometimes trust things that come from elsewhere. So there's sort of this line about Rockhampton, and if it's south of Rockhampton, then it's probably no good. And so one of the things we did was to develop, a, we were actually just about finished this, develop a bunch of videos which have careers that people in North Queensland have where they feel as though the, the, the people in the videos talk about how doing maths B in secondary school, so that's the intermediate subject, makes them better at their job. And of course, I don't know if you know, but the Cowboys won the Premiership in 2015, the North Queensland Cowboys, the Rugby League. So one of the things we did was to get Paul Bowman on here. He did a Bachelor of Sport and Exercise Science at JCU. He was one of the first he was one of the inaugural Cowboys. He played for them for about 10 years. Didn't win a premiership. But he's their high performance manager now. And he was the high performance manager when they won the, the championship last year. Now, the, that bachelor's degree does not have maths be as a prerequisite. But there he is telling the students of the classrooms in North Queensland that because he did maths B, he's better at his job. Okay. So we had a number of these, different careers, the where there might not be an obvious connection to mathematics in the student's eyes, but we get the people to talk about how maths helps them with their career. And they're all North Queensland examples. Thanks, Lisa. If you want to see that video, I can play it later. OK, now the, the next thing is uh, the teachers were very much after examples from the real world. And uh, the reason for that is, is okay, this is a, a modelling example from uh, New South Wales. This is a, a document prepared to help uh, teachers in New South Wales teach modelling. And as you saw earlier, Fenton Pillow's opinion is that modelling is bloody hard to do. And so uh, formulating the mathematical problem, what assumptions do you make, are questions that are really difficult to, to, uh, to gain traction with and I think um, input from the applied maths community into unpacking the modelling process uh, for secondary teachers would be something really beneficial and something that the teachers are definitely after in our region. Alright, so alongside of that the money has allowed us to do a lot of data analysis. So one of the things we've done is to look at the backgrounds of secondary maths teachers as they leave the university. So this is data of, on our own students. So this is graduating maths pre-service teachers and in, at JCU they do two teaching areas. So they'll have done maths and something else. And so what I'm looking at here, what we're looking at here are the number of graduates. So you can see there's not many of them, about eight to 10, maybe 12 in a good year. And they're just categorised depending on whether their other teaching area is science or not science. Okay? This one shows the percentage of maths pre-service teachers who leave with a science discipline or junior science as their second teaching area. So you can see there's a trend there where there's a move, a shift away from taking science as a second teaching area with maths. So what is the implications for that in terms of modelling? If we're using science-based applications in a modelling scenario, does that match the experience of our pre-service teacher in terms of their second teaching area? So what are the consequences of that in terms of what we can expect in a modelling scenario? 
I should point out there are differences. There are two types of students, those that do a, a Bachelor of Education and those that do a Deep Ed. There are differences between those. And this trend away from science as a second teaching area is more pronounced in the Bachelor of Education, where, for example, we have students doing um, physical education as their, as their other teaching area, and with maths. Um, so we take that on board and we try and work out what to do next. All right. So um, those are the, 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 the take home messages there. Um, we need to produce resources that are relevant to the locals. Uh, there is a huge opportunity for applied mathematicians and our, our data analysis has helped us to work out what the challenges are for us and, and gives us a starting point for, for moving forward. Thank you. All right, so there's some time for questions. Does anybody have any questions for Sean? Are there any Broncos fans that want to get stuck into Sean? <laughs> they want it so many times. <laughs> I found it very interesting, Sean. Thanks for that. And um, this is since 2009. Yes. Um, so the, you said that the final um, survey you did, of the, or the testing you did of the um, of the pre-service pre issues before they went out just to teach. What else did you find? Was there any other interesting results? Oh, so so that's just there's no there's no testing there. That's just their background. Okay. I mean, the, the, the other data analysis we've done is, is really in terms of, of how many of them are starting a teaching degree and where they withdraw. It's really, really interesting, sort of getting back to Don's talk before. Um, the number of students who start a, a Bachelor of Education wanting to be a maths teacher and the number of them who withdraw at the end of first year is, is astounding. Um, it, it, it gives a message about the type of student who should be considering doing maths teaching as a career. A lot of them are not suited to it, and largely because they can't pass the maths subjects. So it's, it's expectations again. So, so do they withdraw, oh, sorry, do they withdraw completely from the, the Bachelor of Education? Some of them will stick and, and do a different teaching area, or they might go to primary or something like that, but they withdraw from maths teaching. Think so you Just to comment, I lecture in a... Um, secondary science um, subjects and I'm noticing that there are fewer of my students coming through that are doing science and maths, they're coming through doing this coming year doing science and English, science and so, um, science and there are a couple of science and maths um, but, but doing a range of other subjects. Last year there was science and legal studies and science and Spanish. And yeah, science I mean so that connection between, that from the other point of view, you're saying there's less doing science as their second one, I'm fine with my science ones, and so I think there's fewer doing maths as their second Yeah, certainly maths and science is a good combination. And I mean, I understand why people do other things, but you know, we need to think about what's, you know, what's best for maths teaching and, and, and so on. And, and but also why that connection that, that seemed to be fairly traditional has been broken. Yeah. Too many subject selections. All right. Yeah, sorry, if you want to move on. Um, what sort of evidence did you collect? What sort of information when you were looking at the evidence of what was going on in first year math? Oh, um, in terms of the pass rates and so on? Yeah, what, what were you interested in that, in that collection of evidence? Why was I interested, did you say? So what, what, what's the, I mean, there are lots of evidence you can collect. You know, yeah. The evidence of people who wear red shirts do better yeah. and stuff like that. But what actually did oh no so it was it was i mean it was really whether they passed the subject or not um so it was just it was just the the spreadsheets from from the subjects over the years we didn't actually ask the students you know, we, we just looked at the, the the history the historical data from the university yeah. all right if you have any other further questions for sean patrick mark chapter one over afternoon tea so do you want to thank sean